currently we live in a pretty fractious world um, of where defence is absolutely front and centre and a priority for, for our nation and for, for Labour. Uh, and this pay announcement um, is fantastic news for all those in defence and indeed those broader within the public uh, sector. Um, we're seeing an increase in pay for those joining from 18,000 up to 25,200. I mean, that's huge and fantastic for those wanting to join the military. Uh, secondly, we're seeing an increase of 6% all the way up to one star. And then from two star onwards, a 5% increase, which is the biggest pay increase in 22 years uh, for those within defence, which really just underlines, one, the government's absolute focus on um, uh, providing uh, the right levels of pay to those in the public sector, but importantly, within defence, which is super. The military, as you say, has generally received smaller pay rises compared to the rest of the public sector. You say, obviously, it's the highest in, in 22 years. So taking that into account, don't our armed forces deserve something more like the 22% that you've offered the, the junior doctors? They, they've had to take a, a real terms cut for a very long time, haven't they? As an ex-serving uh, individual who you know was serving three months ago, this pay award is super. It's the biggest pay award in 22 years. Um, and pretty significant. And I think I think really, and not to be overlooked, are those now joining the military, you know, that is um, a significant increase for those who are now uh, that want to start their career in the military. And then as they look forward over all the way up to one star, two star and beyond, um, it's a significant increase. So I think it's a good news story. Do you think it should have been, it could have been more? Um, it, you know, in real terms, how much better off are they? Well, they're, they're thousands of pounds better off. Um, and also, this will be backdated to the first of April. Um, so you'll get, you know, the individuals in defence will get a big chunk of pay in September. The, um, you know, always everybody can say, "Hey, we want more," um, but actually, there's a far broader package within defence as well. They're not just getting a pay rise; they get uh, some some how they get housing, they get food allowance. There's all sorts of different allowances that are wrapped around that. Um, that make the full package from medical to dental care um, pretty comprehensive in the military. And yes, we're trying to improve some elements of that as well. Um, but as a complete package, it's pretty significant and unlike anywhere else in the public sector. What's the justification, though? Because within that, you are raising the cost of accommodation. What's the justification on that? So the, the reality is accommodation is becoming more expensive. But if you were to relate that to the civilian market, it is far cheaper. And I can tell you from living in married accommodation in the past, um, there's a very good deal out there. And we're working now um, with the department to uh, look at how we make that more sustainable and indeed get better quality as well. Uh, but that'll take a bit of time to work through the detail. The last government refused the recommendation to increase it because of the dire state of affairs and accommodation. And of course, it is cheaper. That's part of the offer, though, isn't it, in, in terms of joining the armed forces? So. Do you not think, it, given the dire state of accommodation at the moment, um, that you should have also decided to pause that increase in in in, in accommodation charges? So everything's got to be balanced. Um, what I would suggest you do is you, as, as our team have done, you look at the private um, pay and rental sector and then compare that to what's provided in the military. And the military do get a good deal. What I would say is, and I will assure all the people watching this um, this interview, that we are working absolutely uh, as hard as we can to improve the availability and the standard of accommodation. And over the next six to 12 months, you'll see some announcements coming out of where we're going to look at that uh, and hopefully get a better deal for the military as we move forward. In terms of the pay deal, when it comes to recruitment and retention, do you feel that this pay rise, you know, above, you know, what the rest of the public sector have got, as you say, do you think it will be enough? Do you think it will make the impact you need it to in order to try and solve that crisis? By my own view, and I, I say this from, from my perspective, I never joined the military necessarily related to pay. It's actually a far greater offer about service, adventure, camaraderie. Um, and indeed, a fantastic career opportunity in the education and training you get throughout. But this pay, this pay rise specifically for those joining, makes it financially competitive in in the civilian market, which I think is fantastic. And it's far more than than in, in fact anyone's been paid to date when they you know cr get off the train and, uh, and into the gate of whichever military base they're going to. And I, th I think it's fantastic news. When it comes to the shortage of submariners, take us through what you're offering them, because there's quite a substantial um, package for them as well after eight years of service, isn't there? 
Yeah, so there's a very there's various different packages for different specializations coming out. Uh, the reality is the Marins do one of the hardest jobs in the military, and I think that's reflected within the pay announcements that we've come out with. Um, I don't know, and I've always said this, and I joke about it every now and again. I don't know anyone else that would go away for you know eight nine months at a time, um, and the service they deliver is absolutely commendable. Um, I've got the huge the the greatest respect for the submarine service, um, and I've worked with them in the past. What do you hope Hayrise will achieve? So I think there's well, there's a couple of things. One, it will it will make us competitive with the civilian market, specifically for those joining. Two, it's it's a great signal to defence, both those uh, serving and those wanting to serve, um, that we value you highly um, from a government perspective, from a labour perspective, and that you're front and centre of the public sector pay rise. I mean, this is the biggest pay rise we've had in 22 years. It's a significant step. You've said it's the highest pay increase in 22 years. Generally, each year, when you look at the public sector pay rises, the armed forces gets a little bit less com compared to sort of teachers and nurses, etc. This year, that's not the case, as you rightly say. But considering that has been the long term picture, if you add that up, I'm no mathematician. That means if you look at it in the rounds, you should have why you know some some person might be sitting there thinking. Why shouldn't you know if you want to restore the balance, then why didn't you um give us more to reflect all of those years where you, they haven't had as much? I mean, this is a new government. You've got labor in now, and we've changed, you know, we've changed the chapter. Um, we've turned the page, and now we've given a above inflation pay rise to the whole of defense, which is substantial. And it's the biggest in 22 years. What better signal do you want uh, within defense? I think this is, you know, if I was still in defence, and I looked up, I'd, I'd be pretty pleased with this pay deal in comparison to other public um, sector elements. And I think it's really good news. So why why was it 6%? Why was it not 10% or 22%? What, what was the reasoning behind that? I mean, Armed Forces Pay Review Body is an independent organisation um, outside of defence that have done that review. Um, and, you know, I think this is a fantastic offer uh, for those within the military. You know, as I stated earlier, you've got... Um, a 6% pay rise all the way up to one star, 5% pay rise onwards, uh, and an increase on those joining from 18,000 to 25,200. I mean, this is this, I, th I think this is great news. Um, and it just demonstrates from my perspective, Labour's um, absolutely focus on, on defence, but also the fact that um, this government takes the people in defence really, really seriously and wants to reward them uh, adequately. And, and you say that um, personnel will be welcoming uh, the pay rise. Um, do you think that they will welcome the increase in accommodation charges, though? Well, the, the reality is when you when you align or um, review accommodation charges in the military with those within the civilian sector, it's still far cheaper to have uh, either accommodation, whether that's single living accommodation or family accommodation. I can speak from my own personal experience of living in families accommodation that it is a good deal. What I will assure the people in defence is that over the next six to 12 months, we're going to work um, really, really hard to ensure the standard of that accommodation is better and the availability uh, is increased. Um, and so we'll come back to you in six to 12 months you know, with a bit of a more comprehensive plan when it comes to housing. Um, and just finally, Minister, speaking to you within your veterans brief, um, the Chancellor announced yesterday that decision to limit those who will be receiving the winter fuel payment. Will veterans be exempt from that? What What was your message to veterans there who are just on the cusp, who are worried they're not going to get that £300? So it's not my place really to review the, the Chancellor's um, comments in the House the other day. But what I will say from my perspective is I think that the winter fuel payments um, will, con will, will continue to be paid for those that are receiving benefits in any way, shape or form, or pension credit, for example. Um, those that can afford to pay it will, will have to pay it. The, the financial deficit left by the last government, uh, government is significant. And if we can't afford it, we can't pay for it. So veterans shouldn't be exempt then? Well, I think we need to we need to look at the broader context of the population. So we will work really hard to ensure veterans are supported in any way, shape or form, ranging from medical care all the way through to housing. Uh, if they're on benefits or that indeed they're receiving, um, you know, pension credit in one way, shape or form, uh, then they will be entitled to that pay, uh, that winter credit. But if not, then we will they'll have to pay it. Minister, thank you very much indeed for joining us. We really appreciate it. Uh, looking forward to speaking to you next time. Thank you very much.